Welcome to this third video in the Expanding Universe section of the R Dynamic Universe topic for higher physics. So having looked at the Doppler effect and redshift, this one looks at Hubble's law. So what are we looking at today? Well, we're looking a little bit about large distances in space to start with. And then how to calculate the velocities of distance galaxies and also their distance from us and how this knowledge of the velocities of galaxies and the distance they were away led to the theory of the expanding universe and consequentially to the big bang theory distances are in space are very large and therefore scientists have a number of different units that they can use rather than using meters um, it depends what you want to compare so there is the astronomical unit um, one astronomical unit, one AU, is the mean radius of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which is given on the data sheet for higher physics as 1.496 times 10 to the 11 meters. So this can be quite useful if you're looking at exoplanets, uh, planets that orbit other stars. And if you talk about it being three astronomical units away, that immediately tells you that it's three times as far away from the, its own star as the Earth is from the Sun. So that's quite a good unit from that from that case. Um, we also have the light year, the distance that light travels in the year, which we have calculated for National 5 physics as the speed of light multiplied by the number of seconds in a year. So 365 or 365.25 counting the extra quarter of a day for a leap year multiplied by the number of hours the number of minutes that, to get the number of seconds and that gives you a value of 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters you may still need to do that calculation so just make sure you are aware of how you can do that so if we're looking at stars then um, how do we actually know the distance to stars and to planets. And there are many different ways of doing this, depending on whether we're looking at something that's quite close or something that's quite far away. So we can use uh, radar or light reflection to measure the distance to nearby planets or even our moon. So we'd measure the distance to the moon. There's a reflector on the moon that the Apollo mission left, left there. And we can send photons of light from the Earth to the moon and we can measure the time between the photon being sent and it being received, and then we can work out a distance from the speed time to time. Other methods include the parallax method for nearby stars, which we're going to um, have a brief little look about what a parallax is. You don't have to understand the details, but it's um, quite interesting, but it also it's needed to be able to understand some of uh, Hubble's observations that we're going to talk through too. And then you've got the standard candles, the standard types of stars that exist that have the same brightnesses. If these standard stars have different brightnesses, then that means that that particular star is further away than the other one. So we can use the inverse square law. I, the irradiance over d squared is a constant, so we can work out the distance. So two stars should be at the same brightness. One is not. That means the one that's not is further away from us. OK, so let's firstly talk about parallax. So the easiest way to show you what to do with parallax is to take your two eyes and hold your finger out in front of you. And if you point your finger with if you close one eye and you point your finger at a distant object and line it up with that, and then you open your other eye and you keep your finger in the same place, you can see that your fingers moved when you look between your left and your right eye quite substantially. And this is what's called a parallax. And you can use this to work out the distance to particular objects. Um, what we can do when we're looking at stars is we can look at um, taking a measurement of our star every six months because that will give us the maximum separation, which will be one diameter of the Earth's orbit because it's going to take 12 months to move around entirely 
the sun so we've got the two different positions so that would give us the biggest cha change there and so we can measure what that what that is and then we can work out what the an annual parallax will be a little bit about angles so um, angles we know are measured in degrees but there are smaller units than degrees and they're called um, arc minutes and there are 60 arc minutes in one degree and then there are smaller units than arc minutes which are arc seconds and there are 60 of those in each arc minute so there are 3600 arc seconds in one degree of which there are 360 degrees in our complete circumference so if we're measuring small angles then we do have angles in arc minutes and arc seconds and the unit of distance which relates to a parallax is called the parsec which is short for parallax arc second and one parsec which has the abbreviation pc is the distance at which a star would have an annual parallax of one arc second so one sixtieth of a degree is the difference between observing it in March and observing it in uh, six months later in September in the position that it happens to be. OK, so one sixtieth of a degree. And that means that particular star is one parsec away. And that works out to be 3.09 times 10 to the 16 meters or 3.26 light years. So it's in effect another unit for distance. Um, for higher physics, you don't have to be able to um, state this at all, but it's possible that they could give you information in parsecs and you'd have to change them into meters. OK, there's a link to a video. What is a parsec there? And um, I suggest you have a look at that because that would be helpful. Uh, to provide you a little bit more background information about this. Hubble, a famous astronomer, collected data over many years showing the redshift of galaxies. So he measured the wavelength of light that he observed from the stars and compared those to the line spectra here on Earth to work out the redshift. And then he also measured the distance these stars or galaxies that he was looking at were from the Earth either using the parallax approach or using the standard candle uh, stars approach and he found that the further away a galaxy was the faster it was traveling away from the earth and this relationship is known as hubble's law and this provides us with some evidence that the universe is expanding we can model the expansion of the universe with a balloon. So if we take a balloon and we put some markings on the balloon, when we blow up the balloon, we can see that space in between those markings that represent the galaxies is further apart. Now, when we're doing this, we're best to use uh, stickers on the balloon rather than marking in pen, because if we mark in pen, then our model isn't quite right because what would happen is that the size of the pen dot that we put on the deflated balloon would also get bigger. And it's not the size of the galaxy that gets bigger, it's the size of the spacing in between them that gets bigger. So it's best to do this with stickers because they don't change size as you add the air in. Because it's really the space between the galaxies that is expanding and not the galaxies, it's the galaxies themselves. So Hubble collected this data and he plotted the recessional velocity against the distance. And he did find a relationship, although you can see there's quite a spread in his original data that he collected. And certainly if we were asked to draw a best fit line, we might find it quite challenging from there. So the gradient of this graph is known as Hubble's constant, and that has the symbol H naught. Now, on this particular graph, he's got kilometers per second and megaparsecs as the distance, but the graphs we will look at will have meters per second and distance in meters. But the relationship 
is that Hubble's constant is equal to V, the recessional velocity, divided by the distance. So that means if we have the recessional velocity, we can work out what, what the distance is to that particular galaxy or star that we're looking at. So it's usually written this way, V equals H naught D, and D is the distance. And as I say, this will be meters for high physics and Hubble's law, sorry, Hubble's constant is given on the data sheet as 2.3 times 10 to the minus 18 seconds to the minus one. So we multiply that by the distance and we get the recessional velocity in meters per second. So let's look at what this might mean. So we've got a galaxy moving away from the Earth at a speed of 0.074 C, so relative to the speed of light, 7.4% of the speed of light. And we might be asked to convert that into meters per second which is straightforward enough, and then work out what is the distance of this galaxy from the Earth in meters. So, so we're going to work out the speed in meters per second. We multiply 0 0.074 times 3 times 10 to the 8. That gives us our recessional velocity, and that is equal to Hubble's constant, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 18 times the distance that it is away. So we can rearrange for D to get the distance of 9.7 times 20 to the 24 meters of this galaxy that we're observing here. Okay, sometimes we can get given information about the wavelengths that we're observing. So we've got the wavelength of our spectral line normally being 489 nanometers on Earth, but in the star it's been redshifted to 538 nanometers. And we then have to calculate the recessional velocity of the star that's moving away from the Earth and how far away it is from the Earth. So we put together the work that we've done in the previous uh, video when we're looking at redshift. So we've got our observed and we've got our rest wavelengths, so we substitute them into our relationship to find our redshift. And then we substitute our redshift into our relationship to find our recessional velocity. And then we substitute our recessional velocity into our Hubble's law relationship to find out the distance that this galaxy or this star is from the Earth. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is we can use Hubble law to estimate the age of the universe. So because we know that speed is distance over time, we can write Hubble's law of V equals H naught D as distance over time is Hubble's constant times D. You can see there that we can cancel out the distances because it's on both sides of the relationship. So we get one over the time is equal to Hubble's constant. So the time is equal to one divided by Hubble's constant. So if we know what Hubble's constant is, then we can work out the approximate age of the universe. So if we do that substitution, we can get a value in seconds, or we can change that to something that's a bit more meaningful in terms of looking at years. And we get a value of 13.8 billion years. Because if, um, if the universe is expanding at the same rate, then what we're saying here is that if we rewind the clock, how long would it take to get back to um, the universe being really, really small? Okay, the, the, um, this is a reasonable approach for what is happening, but scientists have now found that the uh, rate of acceleration is changing and that Hubble's constant, despite it being called a constant, is actually varying as the universe expands at different rates. So it's not completely true to say that this is the time scale, but it's a very good estimate. 
So what have we looked at? We've looked at how to measure large distances in space, a brief mention of the parallax process, um, very brief mention that the, we could do it from a reflection of light off different objects or sound off different objects, or we could use these standard candle stars. You don't really need to know any dis any information or detail about that. It is quite interesting. So if you're interested in that, please go and watch some of the other videos that um, are, are up there um, about this thing. So from the point of higher physics, we're mentioning it purely because Hubble's um, correlated the information between the recessional velocities and the distance of the stars and therefore to to make sense we have to know well how did he get information about the distances in the, in the first place so we've been able to calculate the recessional velocities of distant galaxies and then work out their distance and we've discussed a little bit about how this has led to um, the theory of the expanding universe and the big bang theory that will come on in the next uh, video